Hello and welcome to Inside Lemonston. My name is Dean Mazzarola, the mayor for the city. Alan Redstone to the right. Mr. Carl Pemery to the left. Wayne Tate and Keith and everybody's here. There's uh, Ronnie over here to my left. The only thing we don't have is an intro. That's okay. We'll, uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll play the... We'll play, and Bradley's here as well. We'll play the intro on the, on the, on the out. Yeah. How's that? The in, are you an inner or an outer on your intro? Anyway, we are live this afternoon. Thanks for watching. Uh, we have guests from Sholin Farms. Um, be here a little later. That's exciting to think that uh, another season is coming. And uh, think of it. I was up there the other night looking out, thinking about those giant, delicious peaches and uh, the raspberries that they have and blueberries. And I was thinking, that's why we live in New England. Speaking of famous things from New England, we're going to go right over to the art report because he's in full swing, pun intended. Let's go right to the art report. Mr. Art, are you there? Yes, I am. You get that? He's I in a, the swing. Uh, well, I don't know if I'm in it, but I've been around it. But listen, yes, first sir. off, well done Memorial Day Remembrance. And yes. here's why. Not only is everyone associated with, with veterans and having their day, which they certainly do, they deserve it every day of the mm -hmm. year. I have a couple stories. My late great grand uh, uh, father in law, Salmo Torcoletti, a Lemus, not a native, right off from uh, Italy, he was with Patton. And he got the Bronze Star. And he was driving his Jeep, and they had water tubes throughout the Jeep, or it was a deuce and a half. It was a big truck, anyway. And the lieutenant was with him, and he said, look over there. And they were moving along, and it was a, a barn out in the middle of nowhere. He says, let's go see what's in it. So they drove over, and there was a big padlock on the door. And so the lieutenant says to my father-in-law, well, we can't get in. It's locked. My father says, move out of the way. He blows the lock off the door. They open it up, and it is filled with bottles of wine. Oh, yeah, yeah. I now, wasn't there, a lady, wasn't, there a lady, wasn't there a lady involved? I, uh, not that I know I of. thought there was a lady that, that lived there or something. and they. No, no. no there okay. was, it was vacant, but they took the wine... Sam took the, 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 the live shells out of the water tubes and put the wine bottles in there because he didn't want to break them. Priority. They, they brought them all back to the front, to the, to the back of the lines, I should say. Yeah, yeah. And they were rationed the <laughs> can of beer every now and then when they got it. So they traded the wine to the commanding officers for extra beers. Wow. <laughs> see? Yeah, and he never got to see his daughter, my wife Rita, by the way, until she was almost two years old when he came back from the war. Really? Yep. That's he amazing. He was over there when she was born. Wow. Two years old. He got old. the Bronze Star for volunteering to take wounded from the front lines to the hospitalization away from the front mm -hmm. and take ammunition from the from there back to the front lines oh, and boy. fight some more. Oh, and when boy. they needed more, he'd do that again. Well, he had three vehicles blown up from under him, but he kept going. Oh, man. Back and back and back, and he got the medal for that. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Get the guy. He never talked about it. No. One day, we were having a cookout on Cottage Street where he lived, and I said, you never talk about the war, Sam, and I understand that, but I said, was there any, you know, any interesting stuff? And that's when he told me the wine story, and then he saw one more. He said, I was pulling guard duty one night, and I heard some footsteps. They were trotting, running towards me. So I pulled out my weapon and said, halt, and it was a German lieutenant giving up. He took his forty-five. Sam brought that home with him. Wow. Whatever the weapon was, and he showed it to me. It was a German Luger. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. True story. Now listen to this. So he says to the guy, he took the gun, and he says, you speak good English. He said, I went to Harvard. Come but on. I came before the war, whatever, come home, and they, they put him out into the army over there. And he when went he to Harvard. Harvard. He was going to Harvard, and he went back home and ended up being in, forced to go into the German army. Carl and I could have went to Harvard, right, Carl? Oh, he could have flown you there with his machine. Uh, the, the time machine. That's right. We were going to go back in. Really we were going to go back in time. Machine. We just couldn't figure out what year to go back to. That's right. So. 
anyway, we stay. Anyway, that's my story. Oh, thank that's you, good. Thank all the veterans. Yeah, I yes. thought it was quite interesting. We and had a stuff. good turnout Friday night at the uh, White Cross ceremony, and then when we got to St. Leo's, we had a good turnout at St. Leo's on Sunday. Good turnout for people helping the flag. We got down to St. Cecilia's, and uh, there was one list left to do, and we had five people to do that one list. And uh, saying it was rainy, but it was still fun. We had a bunch of kids with us and everything, and um, and and so that the, everything got flagged quickly. And then on Monday morning, uh, over at St. Leo's, and then at St. Cecilia's, uh, and, and a good crowd. St. Cecilia's, a lot of people, and, I but saw they that. always come yeah, out. They wonderful. always come out at St. I don't care what somebody said to me. What do you do if it's raining or you have a big storm? I said at St. Cecilia's, you better come out. They come out. That was nice. Yeah, and very you know, nice. One, very one nice. Little, I forgot that he told me. Um, I, uh, he says the landing. He said I was on an LST with the uh, truck, and uh, they said when the door drops. Hit it and do not stop for anything, even if it's yep. soldiers. Get to the first hedgerow. Do not stop. And mm. and he welled up and said, "That's all I'm going to say." Yeah, that was quite traumatic. Yeah. he was in some battles. I'll tell you, he was with Patton. Incredible, you know? huh? Yeah, Mama's the right. Yep, incredible stories. Bless. Anyway, have a good day. That's and thank you for everything. Plan is that's the plan. Have a good day. Yes. All right. That's it from Art from the Art Report, and uh, be well. All right. Hey. Yeah. So Memorial Day went very well. It was one of those gone before us? All of those veterans who served their country uh, flagged. I don't know. Total. Everybody involved. Over five thousand. About fifty-five hundred graves in Lemonster, and every veteran um, that passes gets a flag, and uh, it. A team effort. Everything we do is a team effort. And it, uh, it, it, I don't think we were there 45 minutes to an hour putting up flags. There were so many people that showed up, even in the pouring rain. And, um, and, and it makes it easy when you can kind of share it around and, and met some nice people, and um, the job got done. All right. Uh, what do you say back there? We take a break? Sounds good. Carl, this, this break, Carl says. Like you're breaking pasta, right? Like you're breaking pasta. Look, Wayne gets excited when he hears the... We, we're breaking pasta. All right, we're going to take a short break here. The name of the show is Inside Lemonster. My name is Dean Mazzarello. We're live from 4 to 5 o'clock, and then we replay at 6.30 to 7.30. And sometimes we'll move our show to 6.30 to 7.30 if necessary. But we kind of found a little, a little place here, Ron, we, a, a little comfort zone. It seems to be more people are watching. It's more convenient for us to get guests. But right now we're going to take a short break, and we're coming right back to talk about apples and blueberries and strawberries, oh my. Welcome to Sholin Farms, as I always say, um, a little piece of heaven right here in Lemonster. We saved this from development 20 years ago, and it is now still thriving and doing a great job, and we are sustainable. We use sustainable agricultural practices, and we welcome visitors. It's a different kind of farm because it's owned by the city and run by the Friends of Sholin Farms. So I represent the Friends of Sholin Farms, and I'm the president of the organization, and my main thrust here or information that I want to share is that it is the people's farm. It requires attention from everybody in the whole city and that means if you can volunteer that's great because we really need volunteers. If you can sponsor us that would be great. Last year was a tough year with COVID being able to do our fundraising we weren't able to so we're doing different things online to try and raise uh, awareness and to raise money to keep the farm running. We also um, Last year we had an unusual season because of COVID. We had less customers, we had new customers, so we're hoping that that will continue. We had to cancel the Apple Blossom Festival for the second year in a row, which is a big fundraiser for us. 
So we're kind of disappointed in that. But right now is the peak of the apple blossoms. So if anybody's interested in coming and viewing the apple blossoms for the next week or so, you'll still be able to see them. They're absolutely spectacular. It's the most magical time of the year for me because then all of a sudden you'll see little apples forming. So it's pretty exciting to see the bees here doing their job. As far as what we're doing new this year, we've got a whole bunch of practices that we're implementing. We're, we're starting up new fields for the pumpkins. So we're tilling and uh, reinforcing the soils. So that's what we're working on right now. And then if anybody drives by the farm, they'll notice that just coming up on the uh, south, nope, that would be the north side of the farm. There you go. We are back here at Inside Lumister, thank you. Nice job back there. You guys paying attention? There'll be a test after. Keith, well, are you paying attention back there? We're always paying attention. What was the general that uh, Art said his, uh, his late father-in-law uh, was fighting battle with? That would be uh, Patton, General George Thank you. S. OK. Uh, you can, Carl, you can sign him on for another five years. Thank right. you, Dean. <laughs> he says thank you. <laughs> Um, no, these aren't earrings. No. Nope. These are not earrings. Mm -hmm. It may look to be earrings, but they're not. They're apples. And Joanne Donato is our next guest here at Inside Lemister. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. I, we just saw you on there, and I didn't know whether that was last year's video or this year, or a combination of the two. Definitely. A combination this of the year, two. No, you, your fine staff here at LATV came up and said. Well, they were packing apples. You still got apples? No. We're, oh, we're, so we're that's out. last year combined with this year. Oh, I didn't know they had yeah, apples. They were on showing here. some apples. I didn't see the video yet, so. Oh, so you haven't seen it. Well, it, it looks good. It's beautiful. I mean, a lots of apple blossoms. Right? Yes, it was we did. beautiful up there this and year. And the bees did their job, as you can see. Uh, they're perfect. There's a huge crop up there. Just nothing like. So I've eaten apples from everywhere. <clears throat> and I've eaten tomatoes from everywhere and every, you know, fresh produce. Nothing seems to taste like it does around here. That's for sure. I, don't know what I think Lemister has, has really unique soils. <laughs> I guess so. And an environment and caring and loving. So I agree a lot with you of there. love. See, the a lot volunteers at Sherman Farms, Absolutely. they provide the love. Absolutely. And you know what happens when you open up, a, when you slice an apple in half? You know what's inside? You get a high, yeah, the heart. Or the Star of David, yeah. depending well, on which yeah. way you open it up. It depends what kind of marketing you're trying to <laughs> do. But anyway, thanks for joining us. I know it's been a rough couple of seasons, and you missed two of the big fundraisers, which are the, um, you know, the apple blossom uh, festivals, and that's and a lot of what you do is rely on, um, you know, those festivals to to make some money that pays for spraying and some of the equipment that you need, and and so. But people are pretty generous. It has been an amazing learning curve to see how generous people are. Throughout the, the COVID situation and throughout last year, it, when we, had a, we sent out a plea or we were asking for donations, people still donated. Mm. So that was amazing. Um, I, I'm just thrilled. And I can't, if I mentioned one sponsor over another, I'd trouble. probably forget one of them. But right now, it's amazing because 137 of the We've, we've picked up 137 renewals on our, mm. our membership program, but we've also brought in quite a bit of money through just asking for donations from many businesses just around here. Just in general, here. yeah. Just in general. I mean, who wouldn't want to, I mean, this is, this, I mean, let's just go back in time. Um, watershed property, reservoirs, um, beautiful piece of land. It's got panoramic views. The last working farm in the birthplace of Johnny Appleseed. Just so open space. It's it's more than just you know a piece of land and let's save that piece of land. No, it it's was, got a, it's got a heartbeat. It's, it's the volunteers everything. and it's the people's farm. I say that to everyone. Yeah. And so I'm very excited about that. We did just re recently put out a newsletter, mm -hmm. and the newsletter had in it our wish list, which is really important. There's so many things that we can't get done that we need help with. And I think a good example of that is the, the gazebo that you see on the video yes. is Ralph Sacramone. I mean, he I'll keep singing his praises, and I'm hoping to get him back to do some more work this year with the, with the uh, gardener. You just say to Ralph, gazebo. can you give me an hour? And then he gets there, and he just falls in love with everybody. He sees the, how the, me he sees the meaning of it. He yeah, feels he, it. He Next thing you know, the wonderful, guys. and then I have to say that John Lestella from North Star Roofing yep. donated the roof and rebuilt the cupola on that one. They did a beautiful job, and on they it. did. And and yeah. you know we're not equipped to be able to do that kind right. of work. Of right course. now we're doing some fundraising to get the gazebo in the back 
up to shape. That's Sue made Gardner. out of cedar. Sue Gardner, I talked to, to the Gardner. family, and the family would like to see something done with it. It has the kids use it, and that's the problem. They break as soon as we replace know, the railings. It's a terrible spot for yeah. it, and it gets all that wind off Manusnock Hill. And it is windy back there. So that's one of our big, big projects this year is to get that done as well. And then the most exciting thing going on at Sholem Farms, and everybody asks us, what's going on? What are you doing up what's there? You're building on? a house I saw trees over there. Coming down. Why did you take down those trees? I saw them coming down. But oh, those were very excited old about that. Trees. That's an expensive project, so we'll yep. be looking for donations on that as well. To plant the new trees, trees. Yes, we'll be putting in uh, eight more rows, but we're going to put them in the spindle formation like we did across, across the, street. the street. And so the, trees, way, are, the to... trees are like three feet apart right. and the rows are and like And they don't 12. grow as tall. They don't grow as but tall. They grow they're a easy lot of to apples. maintain. It's five minutes to prune, less chemicals, and it'll be beautiful. Those big ones, the you need thing, a ladder to climb up on them. And yep. It's dangerous and it just it's labor intensive yeah. and you waste a lot of spray. Yes. And so, um, what's yep. the cost for a tree? If somebody said, listen, I want. How much for a tree? There, X amount of dollars. I'll buy ten. Well, we figure we're putting in eight hundred, and it's ten. It's going to be twelve thousand dollars at least. So, so, and then on top of that, hundred dollars a tree. Thirty-five thousand for the support system oh, and right. the irrigation. Right. So you really, yeah, about thirty-five thousand, thirty-five dollars for a tree at least. So make it fifty bucks. <laughs> to donate. So, for so the, if you'd like project. to donate fifty dollars, it could plant a tree. Do you remember when we did have that to adopt a tree? <laughs> yeah, I do. That was awful because people thought that that was their, their tree, tree. And they, they so wanted coming to pick back, all the like, apples. Excuse me, but I'd like to pick an apple off of my tree, and we're like, your tree uh, died. <laughs> it's that one right there. <laughs> so and we some, decided not to do that. Yeah, but if people like want to make tree. a donation, right. and we'd have a plaque with all the donors' names on it, that's how we're going to do it in the future. Yeah, it, it's it's not like a you're planting a. Sequoia tree somewhere, and yeah. it's got its own place. You put a plaque out front. It's the whole. It, it's it's. You really are making a donation. It really is getting you be used to plant the tree. But if we have eight thousand trees out there, and you have eight thousand plaques, we'd have to charge everybody a yeah. fortune no. to to put a plaque out there. Yeah, so the maintenance of that alone, and and somebody's tree is, might die. So. You know, you just, you can't do it that way. We've learned from experience. So after 21 years, we've definitely learned our lessons. It is beautiful. It's the a other nice thing way that we to help. Do, the other thing I think you know this is, is there's a few other really big ones on our wish list. We want to restore the water tower. That was the icon mm. that made us, set us apart from everybody else. So we've got a fundraiser going on for that. Do we know what that is? Yeah, we still have all the pieces. <laughs> Well, we have all the wooden pieces. Chuck Doyle and them, they took it down from what They took it down, we still have all yeah. the pieces, so we can reassemble it and make it look like it did. Always I mean, reminded me of F Troop. Yeah, oh yeah. You know that? Leaning. Leaning. And the then leaning tower. One bomb in it, and boom. But we took it down before it fell. We could restore that, and uh, that would be cool. Yeah, the leaning tower. So then, and then we also took down another bunch of trees out back, behind where those new big houses went up. And that's going to be one of our rotating fields for pumpkins. Oh, cool. So we're repurposing it. The big thing is getting the rocks out, as you can imagine. And yeah. so we had to hire somebody to come in and, and get the rocks out. I can't how many rocks are in there. Yeah, what just is trying, with all the rocks in I there? I was trying to do soil tests a couple of weeks ago. And I was out there on a Saturday with my probe trying to dig down into the ground. And it was like every time I went down in, it was like I couldn't get to six inches or, or a foot to get the yeah. soil. There's so many rocks in there. Yeah. Well, that's where all the stone walls come from, right? Yeah, I guess. I from. guess. So we, 978 534 1626. If you have any questions at all, Joanne Donato is my guest. And she, and along with a team of volunteers and a couple of hired help, make that whole place work. And it's a Big endeavor, and uh, it's open year-round. It's not uh, commercial. I think one of the things everybody agreed on right away is let's not commercialize this so that it 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 loses its feel, and uh, and and it's it's remained that that same feel. It is. There were people up there cross country skiing this year and snowshoeing, and boy, that place. Every time I go up there, there's somebody that I don't care what time of day you go by. There's always Absolutely. somebody I see the stars, media showers, <laughs> the eclipse of the moon, the full moon, the no moon, the half moon, whatever's going on. People yeah, it's, it's, a, it's different. And I, I caution people yeah. because they get upset if we have to close the doors. Yeah. And people need to understand that that's for their own safety. Sure. And we can't really maintain the orchard without doing the spray program that we have. Which, by the way, the spray program that you implemented mm -hmm. 20 years ago 
uh, Steve's getting ready to send out notices. So oh, businesses are interested in signing up to have apples delivered to their place or even people. Um, they get like either four or eight bushels delivered. So that program is, is very popular. People get really excited about it. They love it. I mean, what a great way to somebody shows up and leaves off a couple bushels of apples. Oh, what's better than that? Absolutely. Unexpected, because usually by the time they make the donation, they forget about it until the fall, and then all of a sudden somebody comes through with, with I'm like, wow. They love right? them. El what Camino is one of our original ones, and they're still getting them once a week during the season. And um, we, we're going to reach out to a lot of the new restaurants, I would imagine, would be interested in fresh apples. I know uh, Bill Brady has been up there buying them, so I said, well, let's rope him in and get a little more going here. Right. Um, what so, a great thing. What yeah. a great asset it is to the it, city. It is to the city and to the community, and people should feel proud of it. And the other thing is the Friends of Sholin Farms is a, is a nonprofit, volunteer-driven. Mm -hmm. um, one of the projects we did this week is we planted 200 tomato plants. Mm -hmm. And I had, we had eight volunteers out there digging in the dirt. It was really cool. Um, and, and pepper plants, and all the plants were donated, so it was, it was kind of cool. And everything that gets done up there, if you want to drive the John Deere tractor and learn yeah. how to mow, yeah, yeah, yeah. we've got people mowing, mowing, we have a mow schedule, Something we have to keep everyone. things mowed, yeah. we have to keep it pristine. It's, it's, it's like, be, I think it's like a shining gem for the city. And people come from all over the all it's over amazing. the state and all over the world. And the, during the picking season, we had people from out of our, well, not this past picking season, mm. but usually yeah. they they come and they they come from different countries, different states, all over the place. Last fall, a lady said, "I'm sorry, I don't want to tell you this, but I've been living here and I've never been up here." And I said, "You're not the only one. Trust me. It's because you know COVID for the for the I guess the positive part of it was if there's anything to be positive was." that people started to reacquaint themselves with the trails, or they always heard about some park, but never got a chance to visit. You know, people are busy. People say to me all the time, oh, you're busy. I'm like, no, everybody's busy. And so they got a chance for the first time to it go was visit fabulous. Barrett Park, yeah. Prospect Park, some of our trails that they never even knew existed, and Sholin Farms. Yep. They were like, oh, wow, this is it. I love uh, it. Another thing that's going to happen is uh, Jane's sitting over here. She doesn't want to speak Jane, up. Jane, I'll come. You don't want to come on. <laughs> no, I'm all set. Also I'm just going to, she, she decided she's going to take over our trail committee because we really don't have one. Right. And many people cool. signed up as volunteers and want to help with the trails at Sholin Farms. They are in need of repair. Mm. So um, Jane is taking a leadership role on that, and I'm very excited. We're looking for volunteers that want to see things happen, that want to help. Uh, don't feel like it's just because the Friends of Sholin Farms, you can't come and help because we need everybody in this city There's to a place support for it everybody. and to make it. Yeah, sure. there is a place. Everybody's talents can be used. I would like to know uh, the history behind that vein of white stone that if you go Isn't down cool? back the and granite. to the trails, and it's just this white stone down there, and I'm like, what's the history behind it? The has white to be... and the pink quartz. Yeah. That yeah, whole vein must have come from the glaciers. Yeah, it's so it's cool. I mean, beautiful. Here, it's like vivid. I mean, you can't. Stunning. And it's big. And some of this stuff is big. Oh, it is. It's huge. It's a whole vein of it that runs across there. So tell us now. So from here on in, things are starting to open. Uh, you're closed tomorrow, is it, for spraying? Yes, we are. We'll, right. we'll open up at 5 o'clock so for the Friday community So that's Friday if you're garden, watching this later. We'll it's be Friday. open first thing. This is only fungicide because we, we do have scab appearing, and so we've got to burn it out. So scab, if people don't understand it, will destroy the looks of an apple. And it might not hurt the apple. It'll still be edible, but nobody wants, nobody wants to eat to a scabby-looking apple. Yeah, you can't you know? gain any money for that so one. So unfortunately, we had wet weather when, and especially last weekend, was really, de really uh, detrimental to anybody that was growing. Um, so, yeah, we're closed tomorrow, and then we'll open at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. I, I think Art O'Leary has a hike going. Oh, he does? Art does, yeah. Yeah, because it's National Hiking Day oh, or something, it is? Good. Trails Day. So I, that'll Another still Another good go person, on. Art O'Leary. Yeah, yeah, he's great. He's, he's awesome. fabulous. So um, I'm just thinking of some of the things I wanted to t touch on. We'll be getting something soon. Blueberries will be coming soon. You have we any open, strawberries? We open in July for yep. raspberries and blueberries and peaches. Peaches are looking fabulous oh, this year. Oh, good. I love peaches. Uh, poor Set used to pick them, like blueberries for me and bring them down to City Hall and raspberries. We'll miss Set. <laughs> I know. We do miss him. So let me tell you something exciting. Yes. So we were approached by New England Apple Association, mm -hmm. which we're a member of. Yes. And they asked if we would be willing to host the first of its kind yes. Apple Museum. Come on. Yeah, it's, it's a rolling museum, so, it moves so to around speak. To different places. It's the first time they've done it. They just got a grant. What they're trying to do 
is they, there is no way that we in New England can compete with Washington State and Oregon and, and those places out west. They just, they're massive, massive farms. Yeah, but the apples aren't as good. They're not as good. I would agree with you. Mm. But some Thick people skin. don't know that. Yeah. So, so they are going to be coming on September 4th, which is Labor Day weekend, mm -hmm. and we are going to be the first wow. traveling mu Look apple museum. So I'm very excited. It's going to be crafters and artists. They're really going to showcase local artists. So they'll be coming out with, they're closing their fiscal books or something right now, so they've been busy. But right after the, June, we'll be looking for crafters and artists and um, I I like also it. New England Apple Products. Steve Rouse Steve, yeah. wants, to, wants a museum at Sholem Farms, actually. He's so cool. He's going to be bringing his hard cider up. And, oh, good. Oh, yeah. Just and, what me and Bumbles need. <laughs> Ooh, hot cider. So that's going to be part of it. They're going to showcase New England cider. Wow. It's going to be a fabulous I can't event. Wait. So no. See, have you, you see have nothing usually to. happens on Labor Day weekend. Right. So we we that's our like a slow time for us. But this is this is exciting. We open actually August twenty first, mm -hmm. and so that gives us a couple of week weeks to get ourselves you know organized. Right. And then then we'll be having food trucks and and it'll be a, it'll be fabulous. And we're looking at a whole lot of different smaller festivals this year yeah. because we didn't have the Apple Blossom Festival, but we'll be looking at, um, we'll have the, a big festival for Columbus Day weekend. We're also working with the crafters to have the crafters festival in mm -hmm. September. So we're, we're trying to fill up every weekend with something, car shows, whatever. We're going we're gonna to explore all kinds of things. Um, Jane is, is going to be working on a fundraiser for, um, with a band in the fall, so that's going to be fun too. So we're trying to reinvent ourselves and reinvigorate the yeah. community because it's a community project. Well, and it doesn't operate just, I mean, we, we want to get a lot of things done. We want an equipment building. Right. We want restrooms. We want, you know, potable water. I mean, there's so much more that we could be doing up there. I mean, I would love to see a, a building. I think Carl said to me, we should put up the old barn, a replica of the old barn. I said, you know how much that would cost to have a barn fundraiser? I said, but, you know, everything is possible if the community gets behind it. Mm. That's the way I look at it. It's not just me. No, people and have been great. It's the, the people, the community has supported it. I, I am thrilled, thrilled with the support we had this last year. I was just touched. You mentioned um, COVID. So I op we opened in July, and we didn't know how that was going to go with the mask on mm. and all that. And you're sitting at a table, and you're selling raspberries and blueberries. And, oh, I, I can't tell you how many fathers with children came and picked raspberries during the week, and it was, like, so cool. They yeah. were all so excited. You could hear them giggling. <laughs> and, and those kids eating. will never forget that. Oh, my goodness. It was just... Dad, you kept eating them. We picked them. You kept eating them. <laughs> that, the jar never got full. Oh, they, they, it was just wonderful. Fathers, mothers, whatever. Yeah, 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 but course. it was like the whole family unit. Yeah. I never saw that before. Well, well, usually the mother would come with the kids. or Most of them will be back because they found something that's really special, whether it was one of the trails that we have or parks and people are coming back. We're already seeing it. We thought when things opened up, the trails and everything would be quiet. There wasn't a parking spot to be had. Yeah, that's uh, wonderful. When the, the whole Recreation. Map, yeah, people are out moving around. It doesn't, it doesn't cost you much money. You count your steps for the day. You learn something new all the time. You meet people along the way. There's some great stories along the way. Judy Sumner gives a good tour as well. And the yes. trails, she kind of, my staff says, yeah, nine miles later, Judy wants to know if you want to go back the same way where you came. Right? Yeah. That's about 18 miles. Yeah. But. So we're looking for volunteers, too. Volunteers. Oh, so here we go. Volunteers. volunteers. Is there a wish list online somewhere yeah, on the your wish website? Yeah, the wish list is posted. Um, well, it came. It's, they can send an email to me at info at sholenfarms.com. We should have it posted on our web page. But, yeah, the wish list is out there, and we finally decided we needed to have it out there because people want to make, you know, make a donation. Sure. They want to know what they can buy or they want to know what they're going to contribute to. So we want to make sure it's meaningful. So, um, yeah, we do have the wish list, and uh, we have info at sholenfarms.com. We have volunteer at sholenfarms.com. We have a good Facebook posting that's oh, current go. all the time. The web page is up to date, sholenfarms.com. Or they can call 978-840-3276. But we're, we're always looking for leadership people. Uh, if people want to get onto the board or they, want, they have some ideas for us and they want to implement them, come to us with, a, with an idea or a plan. Do you have um, students that either come from the extension school at UMass? Do you, you must get students that are interested in agriculture who, you know, who come up because, Let you know. me tell you one of the coolest things that happened this year, 
during the pruning, uh, pruning is in, in, in the winter. And so I opened it up and I got a hold of Mary Fay Fields and I said, I need help. Do you know that all I got, and I did, get, I'm not saying all I mm. got, but I've got like 12 females throughout the pruning. Every single Saturday they would throw, really? show up. I had wow. one guy show up, but all, I, nonstop. Wow. Women. That's uh, awesome. Young, young women. I mean, they, they weren't afraid to roll up their sleeves and... I shouldn't say that because we were all covered with, you know, we were had our winter marks. coats and yeah, winter coats and everything. But I was very excited to see Good. the youth getting involved yeah. and getting excited. And I, and I give them my spiel. Who owns Sholin Farms? And they would say, the city. I said, no, you the do. people. Yeah, you're <laughs> you taxpayer. Do. You're you do. You got. And I would say, oh, but you don't <laughs> know because you weren't born. Oh, when we right. saved it. Oh, my word. <laughs> that was scary got, for me. We got some explaining to do here. <laughs> yeah, so then explaining. I'd have to start at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like the Willie Nelson book. It's a yeah, long oh, story. Yeah, yeah. That's the name of it. It's a long story. It's a long story. <laughs> Books like that thick. Yeah. So we're excited. I Good. mean, this, there's a lot of promise, um, a lot of great things going on. A lot of the cider that Steve makes at New England Products is made, uh, from apples from Sholin Farms. Absolutely. Which makes it taste better. Absolutely, absolutely. We, we won't have as much excess because we did take down those blocks, right. so we took down about four acres of apples. So, um, but we'll still be sending anything, anything extra goes, sure. doesn't go to waste. Yeah. And you're going to be planting new trees. Oh. Now, the spindle... Oh, let me talk about the new trees. Yeah. Anybody hear the apple ever crisp? Hmm. We're going to be putting those in. All so right. what we're going to do is, is... I see them, they sell them in stores a lot. I know, that's a Cadillac reason. of apples, right, let me tell right. you. Ever they taste crisp good. And Sweet Maya. Sweet mm -hmm. Maya, so what we realize is that we don't have a lot of U-Pick varieties for the beginning of the season and, and at the end of the season. Right. So we need to, we need to think along those lines. We had that big block of Marshall Max, and they're all right, but they're only good for like a week or two. And then they're gone. And then they're gone, and the they got to go, yeah, they got to go, yeah. yeah. So we saved half of that block. And the other half is we're going to get just as many trees in there, but they'll be dwarf trees. So we, we've got early varieties, some varieties that we don't have, but we're really focusing on the early part of the season. And then the Evercrisp is something that everybody wants, and that'll carry us into the winter time. Nice. It's a really good now, apple. Just before we close out here, um, the spindles. Yeah. So they're basically, they don't, I mean, a couple years, they were actually so heavy that you had to take some of the apples off because I right. couldn't believe how many apples come from that little tree. Yeah, those are uh, dwarf trees. Oh, okay. And you need to control the amount of fruit that it bears. Right, right, we, right. we weren't really paying attention, so the tops got really heavy and they broke. So now we're really, cool, really cautious about what we let fruit. So we make sure that every tree has so many apples, and we work with UMass on that to make sure that we're not overproducing. <laughs> because it gets... It they, they, like yeah, but you can produce, if you get a lot of apples, you get little tiny apples, yeah. like golf balls. Yeah. But where if you thin them out, which is what apples. we do now, make sure that we thin them out then, and prune them properly, then you get the right amount. But and even that, there's a ton of apples on the, those trees. They're very small. I mean, they're not big. You don't there need a ladder. There have been studies, and that, that's, that whole premise of planting trees three feet apart. Yeah is from Europe, hmm. where they have limited amount of space, right, right. and they were up on yeah, you know, their hillsides and whatnot yeah. and trellis. So I, I love it. Yeah, I think it's I great. really do love it. I think it's, it's good, but I don't like the rows so long. Those are 300-foot rows. It's hard to get right. in and out of. So right. we're, go we're gonna have gaps in between so that it's user-friendly and the people will be able to wander through. Yeah. S circle back. Gotta be able to get through, so. Well, thank you, Joanne. That was wonderful. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. And um, Anything exciting? Anything on the uh, equipment building that we were, we gave you the, um, Architects plan, possibly this year. Ooh, possibly. It's on the we'll wish see list. See how things kind of shake out here. Um, we've got some of that federal stimulus money that's Ooh. out there, and so we might be able to maybe run the soar up to to Sholin and get wow. started on that. And so it's just a, it's it's a it, you know it's a one step at a, at I a time kind of thing. I understand. I you know? understand. But. Yo, because it sits up at the top of the hill at the end of the line. I know. So there's no soil, there's no water, so we have to, everything has to be, you know. And um, farms could function that way for all those years because they had wells, and that's just yeah. the way it went. Today, you need, you know, port something more than a porta potty. You need more water to be able to do things and clean things. Oh, so. I totally agree. I yeah. totally agree. As long as it's still somewhere. Yeah. Well, we didn't forget. Never. Always on, <laughs> always on the lookout. All right, thank you for being on the show. We're going to take a short break. Remember, the phone number has not changed. It's 978-534-1626.
And we'll be right back. We'll update you on uh, updated COVID numbers, some other things happening around the city. But either way, we are thinking about those giant uh, peaches. What we're and, doing and, new this year. We. Who? That. That was that was Joanne. What? Did you hear that? that Sorry, was I was a little bit early on the button there. Oh, it's okay. I thought you were about to close out. All right, we're about to close out. Thank you, Joanne. Oh. Thank you. We'll be right back. Thank you right so here much. Inside Lemister. 978 534 1626. Go ahead, Keith, hit the button. As far as what we're doing new this year, we've got a whole bunch of practices that we're implementing. We're, we're starting up new fields for the pumpkins. So we're tilling and uh, reinforcing the soils. So that's what we're working on right now. And then if anybody drives by the farm, they'll notice that just coming up on the uh, south side, Nope, that would be the north side of the farm on the right-hand side of the road is a big field that used to be all apple trees and people keep asking us what are we doing with it. Well, we've got a huge plan underway to build a new orchard in there and there'll be roughly 800 trees and we're using uh, guidance from UMass and guidance from our, our people that uh, support us to first reinforce the soils with compost, which we've done already, and then till it and then take out the rocks and then by April of next year we should be planting all these new varieties such as Evercrisp and Sweet Maya and early varieties that people want to come you pick because most of our you pick is the Marshall Mac so right next to it you'll have six more varieties of wonderful apples in the beginning of the season and we're planting 800 trees in an acre and it will be in production within two years that's very exciting so we're raising money to, to support that, so if anybody's interested in helping out in that way. As far as volunteering, I head up the pruning team on Saturdays, and pretty much every Saturday of the year I'm here. So 52 weeks out of the year I'm here on Saturdays, and I've been doing that for many, many years. So this year has been challenging trying to get people here, but I have some young people that have been fabulous who have showed up every Saturday to do the pruning. So we've gotten the pruning done, so we finished last Saturday. And now we're into planting raspberries, pruning blueberries. There's all kinds of work to be done here. We have, um, as you can imagine, a farm this size. We are 167 acres, and we have plenty of hiking and trails and really well marked. It's the people's farm. We encourage people to come, lay out a blanket, have a picnic, go for a hike, and use the farm and be respectful of it. The volunteer work that gets done here is amazing. Uh, between mowing and pruning and uh, everything that needs to get done, fundraising, organizing, and then running the farm stand. We'll be opening in July for raspberries and blueberries and peaches, and those are all crops that we've added in the last 20 years, and it's been absolutely exciting. So I love to see the families come. I love to hear the kids laughing in the, in the orchard. It's spectacular. I ask people to be mindful from now until June, the end of June possibly. In July, we, we do have days when we have to spray. Apples are a very finicky crop. They have to be taken care of, so we use integrated pest management. We work with UMass, and we follow their guidance on what chemicals need to be put down, whether they be in very few insecticides, but a lot of fungicide when it comes to apples. We've had a lot of rain this spring, and that really makes it challenging for any farmer. So those are basically the key points, is that we're looking for volunteers, we're looking for sponsorship, we're excited that we're in our 20th year, actually going into our 21st year, and it's, it's just been amazing. I, I'd like to list all the volunteers and the sponsors, but it would be, there would be too many. If you look at this gazebo we're standing in right here, um, North Star Roofing did the roof last year, and Ralph Sacramone restored this entire gazebo, which I think he did an amazing job. It's a 50-year-old structure, and he had to replace many of the boards and everything. But that's a volunteer project, and he enjoyed it, and we're going we're gonna to make sure he comes back again. And then other volunteer stuff. There you go. That was good. Fun segment there with Sholin Farms and Joe and Donato. And uh, again, if you want to call about something, maybe you have a question. You drove by something, and you saw something, and you said, you know, I've been meaning to ask, what's going on over there? How are they doing on this? Um, that's the wonderful part about our show is we do it live so that you can call and ask the question that nobody else has, but you're all wondering what the answer to it is, right? So go ahead. If you feel, if, and, and if you want, just call 978-534-1626. You can ask um, whoever answers the phone. Uh, say, could you ask, I'd like to go off air 
can you ask this question? And then they'll read me the question. You could go set back in front of your television set and we'll go ahead and answer it for you. Let's give you some numbers. As of um, yesterday, there were 25,000 people that were tested. 100 people tested positive for the virus across the state. There were 15, I'm sorry, three new cases in Worcester County. We're down to 32. 32 and uh, 15 deaths around the state. That's way too many. 216 in, in uh, hospitals across the state. 76 of those people are in intensive care. We're at a positivity rate of 1.79. That may change today. That's why I keep looking at my phone because, well, we could get an email at any particular time letting us know what the new amounts are. Hey, if uh, somebody is... Oh, i got to click here, don't I? If somebody's still looking for a test, you know what? Somebody may wake up in the morning and feel a little bit off and think, yeah, maybe I should get tested. Uh, or maybe you have a, a medical procedure, a doctor's office, or somewhere that says it's required that you have a test. Then here you go. Here's the list. UMass Health Alliance, CVS, Mill Street, Walgreens, Central Street, CVS, Electric Avenue, Lunenburg, Fitchburg Community Health Connections, Carewell, Urgent Care Center in Fitchburg, Walgreens, John Fitch Highway in Fitchburg, uh, Rite Aid in Clinton, and CVS Clinton uh, on Main Street, and then Main Street uh, also uh, Walgreens. So there you go. There's the information. But uh, Carla, welcome to the show. So oh. we don't actually have a caller. We have a question. Yes. Uh, they wanted to know uh, if we had any information for when movie theaters would be opening up. Movie theaters are open. Um, One's downtown? I'm at downtown. Searstown. Searstown. The mall at Whitney Field, whatever it is they call it. Yeah, it should be open. I mean, they're, they're, um, they're still in business and everything, so they, they should be open. I know the other ones I've driven by out of town are open, and it's hard to tell sometimes down here because the market basket traffic moves over there, but they, if anybody knows, let us know. If anybody's actually been to the movies, but from my understanding, they are open, and the state is allowing them open. Um, Excellent. Good call. Good question. All right, let's move on to my next slide, which just basically shows you the vaccination uh, update, which is um, the amount of people that have gotten first dosage, and as you can see, uh, the total right now in Lemister is about 61%. Uh, 75 and older at 85 percent. Listen to this, 65 to 74, 90 percent, Wayne, 90, and 80 percent, 50 to 64, and even when you get down to 20 to 29 years old, 54 percent. So pretty interesting, pretty interesting numbers, as far as I'm concerned. Upcoming projects in the state. Well, we're just finishing up downtown, at uh, in front of the fix. Rollstone Bank, Caldwell Bankers, that area down there, and uh, just finishing up. You'll see the tables out front there pretty soon for the fix. But uh, Skateboard Park, uh, probably at the end of this year, uh, actually, they could actually start this year uh, with that project. I don't know if it'll start in July, but it's possible. Massworks Grant, they've already uh, started this week. That's an infrastructure grant down around the mall. A FEMA grant for the connector. You may not see it, but the uh, road was eroding and, uh, and, and caving into the river. And you've got to stabilize that, or eventually you lose the road and you lose everything else around it. Uh, Route 13 is underway, doing a great job out there, um, keeping the traffic open. And they work in little sections, like they do a job over here, and then another one over here, and another one over here. And they drive by at night, and I'm like, they, I can't believe how much they got done. Uh, Route 12 South, that's a $14 million job that's, uh, that's, that's uh, being done now, as far as the engineering. And what's interesting is we've really tried to, one year, I would say maybe 15, 12, 15 years ago, we had a couple of projects, and they started at different times, but they got to the same point where they were actually under construction at the same time. So what happened is we were actually detouring people from one project to the other, and then from that project back to the other, and that, and that wasn't pretty. And you don't want to give up the money, obviously. You don't want to say, hey, we we're busy. We can't have two projects going at the same time, So because the state will actually, and has done in the past, just take the money reallocate it because it's sitting there. And uh, so what we try to do is line these projects up so they don't go into each other. The uh, bike trail project is really coming along. It looks great down there. Um, the aluminum seating now, they're going to be putting up some fencing. Blacktop is done. Um, really coming along. It's, it's, it's impressive. And then 
On the other side of the rail trail project is the Route 12 project, Route 12 North, we call it, and that's an $8 million project, and that's when you're gonna see the Workers' Credit Union building come down. That's when you're gonna see all of these intersections done over between um, North Main and Hamilton, all the way over to uh, North Main and, uh, and uh, Pre Street. And so all that'll get done too. So, so it, it's gonna be a different place, much more safer. The uh, intersections will line up. And uh, yeah, so a ton going on as we speak and more to come. I know I'm gonna run out of time, so I'll get through this. Hey, Pink, are you gonna come to Pink Flamingo Day, Mr. 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 Tate? Pink Flamingo Day. I'll be there. The 23rd, five to seven. So you can dress in your favorite uh, get up. We'll have some contests there. There are a number of vendors there. Uh, everybody's excited this year about Pink Flamingo Day, June 23rd, 5 to 7 o'clock. Hey, Farmer's Market is back, and they'll be there this Saturday, and they're actually going to be there from 11 to 2 in the afternoon. So 11 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. It's the first Saturday of every month, and they're going to be out there. Yes, I can't wait for strawberries this year. I'm not sure why. I'm so excited about getting fresh strawberries. Our bargain days are coming up June 26th to the 27th. That was fun last year. We had a lot of people participate, not just at downtown, but stores and businesses across the city. Lemonster, old-fashioned bargain days. Lemonster Concert Series, got word from Sunny. Supposedly uh, tonight, we're all set to go, right? Tonight is Small Town, June 3rd. Tonight, the first of the concerts. Thank you to Sunny. 7 to 9 o'clock at Carter Park. It ends when it ends, but usually around 8, 30, 9 o'clock. So come on down, next week is uh, Step It Up, June 10th, and then the 17th is the Pure Country Band. So there's uh, concerts almost every week from now to the end of August, so pretty exciting. Nominate somebody for Citizen of the Year. Citizen of the Year, the concert's gonna be, and fireworks will be November, uh, I'm sorry, August 7th. So if there's somebody you would like to nominate, uh, by all means, uh, you can get an application at City Hall. You can get an application at the library or the emergency management, or you can get it at Lemonster. Starburst. Burst. Starburst.com. There we are, signing the diplomas. So we send out a certificate to every graduating student. These are especially important because, well, it's especially important because for COVID, uh, this has been a interruption of their school year, same as it was last year. So we wanted to give them a, a special special certificate, and, uh, and, and I think that, that does the purpose. So they all went out the other day, so students should get them before graduation. We had an excellent life science uh, committee meeting the other day. We put some people all from the industry in, uh, in the same room, and wow, we thought this meeting was gonna last an hour. I think it started at 6.30, and we got out at nine o'clock. There are so many great resources that we have right here in the city of Lemonster. So you'll be hearing a lot more about life sciences and opportunities for your, your children and students and also adults. Raising the pride flag, we did that this year, uh, yesterday. Uh, police and uh, our assessor's office was there, our, our chief assessor, police chief and captain were there, a number of others were there at noon uh, while we raised the flag for, uh, for pride day and month. Boy, it's really coming in nice, that park out front, huh, Wayne? It really came out nice. And uh, they're starting to pack everything up and bringing tools away, and, but it just came in beautifully. And now uh, it's irrigation and lighting, and it's just waiting to see it. Once they take the fence down, you see what it really looks like. Oh, Sally's at it again. Sally's plant flowers at City Hall. She does it not only downtown, but throughout the city. And I heard Larry just doing absolutely beautiful job. So thank you all those who send in checks. We know we're always raising money for, uh, for plants and flowers and, and anything else that comes in in between and as it, as it relates to beautifying the city. So if you want to make a donation, you can send it to the mayor's office, uh, 25 West Street, right here in Lemonster, 01453. Get ready for graduation down there. Have you been down there, Wayne? Looking good. Getting ready, and uh, graduation is 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Very exciting. We went to Francis Drake School. Francis Drake stu School students, fourth graders, raised some money. They raised 1,400 bucks. We made it 15, so we get close to 15. And all of the money, they, they sold uh, uh, freeze pops. 
And all the money they made off it went to uh, the fire fund to help those who were victims of that last fire. And then we had the White Cross ceremony up at the uh, senior center, up at the veteran center, and that went extremely well. And uh, even though it was raining a little and everything, uh, people still show up. Nothing stops these people. They realize the sacrifices of those that uh, are, are behind us uh, or in front of us there at the White Cross ceremony are, are far worse than a little bit of rain. And uh, these are veterans that never made it back to their homeland. Abby Waterhouse uh, did the um, national anthem. Just did a beautiful job of it. It was beautiful. And then we had the uh, International Veterans Qu Chorus. And uh, you know what? I, I felt bad for them. They were, you know, these guys aren't 50 anymore. They, but I'll tell you, they're not wimps either. It, they got up there and it just started to pour. But you know what? They did three songs and uh, they did a beautiful job. It really, very impressive. And uh, there's uh, Mr. Roberge. Uh, down at Memorial Day, and uh, as the wreath gets placed on the common, uh, this is my special visitor <laughs> to City Hall. That's not Buckskin Sam, that's my grandson. And he took my hat, and there's the, uh, he also took the sword. Hey, they don't, uh, 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 put that down. But he just wanted to hold it, so I, I did let him hold it. And there's the photo of the week. Pretty good, huh? It's been busy, Wayne, out there, DPW and all departments. You know, the greatest thing is that team effort, that ability for everybody across all departments working together. You get so much done. You can kind of, it's not about one person, not about the mayor, not about the city council. It's about the team, right? It's about everyone, and everybody has something to do with the accomplishment, so we can all, always enough room on the stage for everybody to take a bow. <clears throat> Let me see what I might have forgotten here. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited about the fact that we're going to start having events again. Yeah, I'm really excited. I shouldn't say I'm a little excited. I'm really excited. Starburst coming up. Well, the Bargain Days. Um, the, the, the stroll we couldn't pull off. But um, talked to Rick Marsh on as early as this morning, and it's full speed ahead with the uh, Johnny Appleseed Festival, the Cannoli Fest. Heck, good stuff. Just a minute or two left here. Bradley's coming out to give me the, hey, wrap it up signal. 978-534-1626. If you don't reach us here and you have a question, you want to comment on something, good or bad, uh, you can call my office at 978-534-7500. You can Facebook message me. You can uh, message me on Twitter. Can you message on uh, Instagram? I don't remember. Anyway. There's a slew of ways of uh, reaching out to us. You can also email me at dmazzarello at lemons-ma.gov. We're out of time here at Inside Lemons. Thank you for watching. We do a replay at uh, 6.30 to 7.30, but we're live today, and we'll be back next week. Good night. God bless you. Remember, the world is run by those who show up. You got to show up. Good night. Inside Lemonster is brought to you in part through the generous support of N.P. Crowley Company Incorporated and by Landmark Self Storage in Lemonster. www.landmarkselfstorage.com